Good, e good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. Daddy, it's starting! Get every single one of you's a bit Jesus. What a wild ride this has been. Well, that's a very blunt question. But France is lying to you. Friends and neighbours, and have confidence that the team will keep you safe. But now you start to... to... Good, e good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. Daddy, it's starting!
Let's load up the adverts. You know, load the tapes under the desk. Look down. You might want to have a bit of a think about it. Your decisions have consequences, don't they? You can see they finally got the old headline system up and working again. And the vision mix is already in headline mode because headlines always come at the start. It's really simple, mate. These two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer, you can see they now have A and B on them. And they're to help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here or image B on the right bottom screen here. It's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Provided you make a decision in that time, you're fine. And you can change your mind as much as you want until the clock reaches zero. But if you don't make any decision, you'll be fired before you even get to make another choice. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them. And that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts, choose carefully. No, and we're off. Good luck, mate. Before I get time off, be back in the next break. Yeah, I'm coming, darling. My friend Janet says theirs gets really hot. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody. Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five, four, three. It's time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's... Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this chart. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical... Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody. Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five, four, three. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this chart. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the country's wealth creators in a state of panic and unfavorable rumblings already heard from overseas, I'll be asking my guess whether Advance can deliver on even a fraction of their manifesto promises. Out with the old, Remington Fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. 
Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honours, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favourably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehux. Sophia promises it will be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful expeditions for this unlikely pairing. In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, we will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field, rumors abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very program. And judging from the angle and velocity of that spray, it looks like Johnny may have been celebrating a little bit too much. I certainly wouldn't want to be his dry cleaner. And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more people saying they're scared to walk the streets alone at night, could this be exactly the right time for Advance's new approach? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody! Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes. Going in five, four, three... Time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's... Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this chart. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the Assets and Wealth Act on the brink of raising living standards for the vast majority of the country, I'll be asking my guests if we're on the way to a new future. Out with the old, Remington Swiss have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honours, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favourably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehearts. Sophia promises it will be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. 
Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Svorsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful expeditions for this unlikely pairing. In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, we will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field, rumors abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, as reported by this very program. And judging from the angle and velocity of that spray, it looks like Johnny may have been celebrating a little bit too much. I certainly wouldn't want to be his dry cleaner. And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more people saying they're scared to walk the streets alone at night, could this be exactly the right time for Advance's new approach? All that, a mega morph for the group of young actors already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Everybody, can we get the guests in quickly, please? We actually had to make the book indestructible because people tried to set it on fire too much. Like, Thanks for coming on. government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Advance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last Great War. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't... And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! But what this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already, they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Frankenscience and Opie Arts. Frankenscience and Opie Arts. 
opiates. Like opiates. See? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Ellen? This Can is the issue. Hand, please, Ellen. It's all coming from the water, the chemicals. They're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong. I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If advanced lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. On the One minute back. One you know, minute back. I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Jeremy. How much are you being paid by them then? Shut the fuck up. I've never heard so much shit in my life. <laughs> well, we'll see who's full of shit, won't we? Alan, I can explain it to you, but unfortunately, I can't understand it for you. Your face. Well, I don't know what she meant by that. So the new formula actively removes harsh chemicals from your skin. The high salt content actually pulls the dihydrogen monoxide right from your pores to give you the crisp, brittle skin you've come to expect. New Judico Shon will revitalize the appearance of... You're a great Christ on earth, isn't it? Be fucking flying, I tell you. Woo, 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 woo. How's it going, actually? Fuck it, I don't care. I hate the fucking news. Oh, bloody hell, I love this tune, though. All right, mate, see you later. Bye. Judy Cashon. Because we said so. I'm saying I'll do what I can, that's all. Shit, you will. She's good. You know she is. I've said I've got a word in. That's all I can do. Ten seconds, everybody. Is Widow J.D. scared of the big bad culture with water? If that sticks, I'll destroy you. Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, Welcome we're going to be taking a deep dive segment. into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a Advance solutions team to, to move this serious team. social problem to the move top of the list. Tonight, to we go behind the headlines tonight, to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. I'm just saying I'll do what I can, that's all. All shit you will. She's good, you know she is. I've said I've got a word and that's all I can do. Ten seconds, everybody. Is Widow J.D. scared of the big bad culture with water? If that sticks, I'll destroy Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory George, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front Can you hear me, Gregory? Oh, 
bloody hell, I love this tune now. All right, mate, see you later. Bye. 41% said they loved their visible plates, and 7 out of 10 dentists would recommend it. 10 seconds, everybody. Judo Kashan, because we said so. 5, 4, 3. Welcome back. In our second segment, Welcome back. we're going to be taking in a deep dive segment, into the state of we're going to be taking a deep country. dive into the state of law advance and order in our what they are calling a advance of a ruddy task, task what they are calling to move this serious social problem to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight we go behind the headlines. Tonight we go behind the headlines. To make the people, who live, the the make the people who live every with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge. First up, who sees the problems close up. A lawyer who sees the problems close up. Can you hear me, Gregory? Can you yeah, hear me, Gregory? I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I've got What's you, Jeremy. What's it like on the front line of the hard face What's of the cold What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Well, as you can imagine, we're massively understaffed in this country. We're massively understaffed in this country. We're massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're in this country. Yeah, we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problems. Right. We need more support from ministers. We... <laughs> we need change at a structural level, Jeremy. Not a good time, right? I'm just saying I'll do what I can, that's all. Oh shit, you will. She's good, you know she is. I've said I've got a word in, that's all I can do. Ten seconds, everybody. Is Widow Jake scared of the big bird culture with Widow? If that sticks, I'll just Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to make the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, yeah, so I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having yeah, me. So What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problems. Right. We need more support from ministers. We... Time, darling. It never is, is it? Time, I'll be at my mother's. It never is, it? Just hang on. Oh, no. Just hang on. Oh, the, the, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about. <laughs> I'm just saying I'll do what I can, that's all. Oh shit, you will. She's good, you know she is. I've said I've got a word in, that's all I can do. 
Ten seconds, everybody. Is Widow Janky scared of the big bird culture with water? If that sticks, I'll just stay. Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desk. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Greg. We need more support from ministers. We... What are you doing? We need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Just hang on. No, the, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Judge. We need, uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public service. Sorry to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes, I uh, totally understand. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective. Well, and I would have expected this from your sister. But problem with the system, Bob? Oh, I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife uh, or cosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy. Down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And attribute this moral decay. Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, a bloody gimp's escaped. <laughs> Delia? De little help, please, dear. Uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral oh, yes. decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. Oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh. in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Back you go. Back in your gift space. And Off you go. who's responsible to use it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people. Darling, where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this simply won't do. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Mummy said... Clive, I am not having this again. Mummy said, get back in your kids' face. No! Naughty! You beast, Clive! You As I was saying, Jeremy... OK, crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A-, minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there, really locking down the police's position on morality. There we go, in you are. Good boy. Look, I spoke to Mallory at the... It's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary and menacing a swap. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Cheers, Jez. Call me Titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. Hey! Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but... It's a constant battle against institutionalisation, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. Hey! Yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. 
Good bunch of lads. OK, well, we're trying to get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Tit wank Tony! I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. Open! Yeah, I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris, oi, oi. little Chris, oi, oi. and vampire Chris. <laughs> This one's, yeah? Yep. One sec, love. Shit, when on the news. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. Open! So, do you feel tempted to... I'm sorry, who's this guy? Open! You are joking. Chrissy Free Bollocks has only got Mr Fancy, oh. Not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It seems, it seems like we've caught you at a bad time. Hey, little boy. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus. Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal no there, Tony. fucking way, let's believe that! Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. I think we... <laughs> yes, Tony? Tony, I mean, we're literally away for two seconds. How has this happened, Tony? Can you hear me? Well, we seem to have lost our train of thought there a little. Hopefully you, the viewer at home, have managed to clean up... ...issues <laughs> around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some... <laughs> ...young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. That went well. Piss off. Smooth, incisive journalism. <laughs> Drunk. It's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't, though. You won't get punished for it or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip. When the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love music. God, I'm so pissed. I think I might go and throw up in a bit. Looks right, I've got this. I'm sure he's on his way. Come on, it's welcome back. How hard can it be? This is on you. Ten seconds, everybody. We're going to open on Megan. Camera two. Going in five, four, three. Welcome's Black, I'm Megan Wolfe, and on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College, who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey, Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley-Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. And I believe you two are sisters, is that right? Yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> Only joking. Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. Yeah. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria and I said, hey, let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes, as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths teacher. Maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. As is theatre. It's one of the oldest art forms in history, Aristotle. Made. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. We touch our audiences, and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. <laughs> we just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yeah. That's right. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like all of us. It's like a metaphor. 
Maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Put it in, coach. Yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> so, Jeff, when did you first hear about the grants? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from the bin and brought it to me. Wow, how did you react? I also threw it in the bin. But then Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page, and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny, because Angela and I don't usually vote. We were not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic, mainly. But we did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day, and so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this whole democracy thing. OK. <laughs> and here we are. Well, oh, good stuff. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> so let's have a look at a short section of Hey Friendship. Dear diary, I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. I'm not sure I can take another day at this. Another day of tears. Tears. Another day of fears. Tears. But still I walk the corridors alone. But still I walk the alone. Corridors. alone. Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi, Gary. Oh, heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Oh, Gary, Gary the, the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year? Great. I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject. And so important. And so important. Maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Keep going for fuck's sake! Right, uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? My arms free coat. Brilliant, keep going. Right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I'm Gary the Fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. Take a look at me. Take a little look at my face I could be you She could be you And you could be me Or you could be me Life can be be cheeky choice to remain so, so stop now make a different choice Gary the Fist. People think the folks like me probably shouldn't exist. But that's just prejudice, and I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary, Gary the Fist. I grew up on a 
council estate The park was hip but the flats weren't great My dad used to come home drunk and late And he'd hit my mum for dinner, he had to wait Of course my dinner is wrong. I guess life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 It's so damn hard on a council estate. Thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name's Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. Oh, that was brilliant. What the literal fuck was that? I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Take a look at what's in store tonight on Channel One. Kicking off our evening schedule is a retrospective of the best moments from Peter Clement's Just the Job, reminding us just how our new Prime Minister became so popular in the first place. Following that, at 9pm, Megan Wolfe sits down for an exclusive interview with former Prime Minister Jacob Hamilton Mann in Truth to Power. And she'll be asking... <laughs> Fire too much. Is fire on set to try to set to try to strike in book in destruction? Yeah. He quickly get me over back. Might be news. Thirty seconds back, everybody. Can we get the guests in quickly, please? We actually had to make the book indestructible because people tried to set it on fire too much. It is like. <laughs> Of the government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised, but what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves, we're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Advance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. We're to become the great herd, ignorant, sterile and short-lived. 
that's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last Great War. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't and what And this I... will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno-brainwashing, who will be laughing then? That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a per poverty. Bollocks! What this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's where you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie... <laughs> ...balls the dihydrogen monoxide... Advance have already tasked what they are called... <laughs> Jeremy, we as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. Uh, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Greg. We need more support from ministers. We... Helen, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, we need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. I'm leaving. Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Uh, just hang on. No, the, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. J just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about... Hello, Mr Donaldson. Hello, Mrs Judge. We need... Uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public service. Sorry servants. to interrupt the news, Mr Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes, I uh, totally understand. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective. Thank you, Ellen. I would have expected this from your sister, but... Problem with the system, Bob? I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Uh, or kosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy. Down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, your bloody gimps escaped. <laughs> Delia? Delia, it'll help please, dear. Uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral oh, yes. decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. Oh, sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh, in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Back you go. Back in your gift space. And you go. who's back responsible to use it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people. Darling, where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive, this simply won't do. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Mummy said get Clive, I am not having this again. Mummy said get back in your kids' No, naughty, naughty, naughty boy. Oh, 
You beast cut! As I was saying, Jeremy. Okay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal. No one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there. Really locking down the police's position. In you are. Good boy. Look, I spoke to Mallory at the It's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary,